Hi there, I'm Sean Delman. If you're a lawyer or legal assistant, stay tuned. In this short course preview, I'll be looking at what you need to get started with a desktop scanner and the rules that you should follow to run a paperless or paper light office. To manage and create digital copies of paper documents, many people use software such as Adobe Acrobat to view, create, and manage PDF files. The acronym PDF means Portable Document Format. The PDF file format is extremely versatile and probably the best one for reproducing documents in digital form. The easiest way to produce a PDF from a paper document is to use a multi-page document feed scanner, such as a desktop scanner. Flatbed scanners can also be used to scan documents and create PDFs, but they're slower than multi-page feed scanners and can only scan one page at a time. They are, however, useful for scanning certain types of documents which can't be scanned using a multi-page scanner. This includes documents that are made out of hard plastic like IDs or credit cards, are of an unusually large size like posters or engineering plans, or are bound and not loose leaf, such as books or passports. For all other kinds of loose leaf documents, which are letter, legal, or smaller sized, including business cards and receipts, desktop scanners are extremely useful. When working with these kinds of documents, there are many advantages to using a desktop scanner. Desktop scanners save time in many ways. It typically takes only a few seconds to scan a page, and many scanners will scan both sides of a document simultaneously, so that the whole page is captured in a single scan, front and back. Once a document is scanned, it can be used on a computer quickly and easily. Digital documents offer many advantages in terms of accessibility and functionality. It's easier to view, store, edit, combine, share, sign, and redact digital documents than physical documents. In terms of physical dimensions, desktop scanners take up little desk space. They also reduce paper clutter, make for a cleaner working environment, and increase the physical space that's available in a workspace by reducing the need to store paper. Desktop scanners also offer advantages around security. The risks associated with keeping loose paper documents are reduced when documents are scanned into password-protected computer systems. Once documents are scanned, originals can be stored or destroyed, depending on the document, and work can proceed using the original version. Desktop scanners are relatively inexpensive and may even pay for themselves in terms of the benefits that they offer by being portable. On many occasions, I've taken my portable desktop scanner and laptop to a courthouse library to scan public records and reference materials for free. Without a desktop scanner, I'd either need to pay to make photocopies or use a smartphone to take photos of the pages. While this can be helpful if these are the only available options, in terms of cost and quality, photocopies or photographs can't compare to high quality scanned images. Getting started with a desktop scanner is relatively easy. You'll need the following. First, you'll need a desktop scanner unit. Many different makes and models are available, which vary in terms of size, price, quality, and speed. If you're looking for somewhere to start, I recommend looking at scanners made by Fujitsu. Second, you'll need physical space on your desk. Fortunately, desktop scanners are relatively small and don't need much space. If you have the room and can budget in some additional space, it's helpful to elevate the scanner and place a paper tray below it to catch documents after they're scanned. If possible, you may wish to try putting your scanner on the back of a small laser printer. The built-in tray on the printer which catches paper after it's printed also doubles as the tray which catches paper after it's scanned. Third, you'll need standard computer hardware. Desktop scanners connect to computers by wired or wireless connection. Once your scanner is connected, you'll need a hard drive which is large enough to hold your scanned documents. Alternately, you may want to configure your scanner to save documents to a public directory on a network so that other people can access and use the documents that you're scanning. Fourth and last, you'll need computer software. Desktop scanners will come with software or it will be available for download on the manufacturer's website. Depending on the scanner and software, many different custom settings will be available to control things such as the location of where the document is saved on your computer or network, the scan image quality, color, and compression, whether documents are scanned single or double-sided, whether documents feed into the scanner face up or face down, the file format the scanned document will be created in, I recommend using PDF format, whether the scanner will automatically run optical character recognition or OCR on the document as it's scanned, and whether the scanner automatically detects the size of the paper being scanned. For most people, the default settings will work well enough. However, making custom changes can make the scanner work even better for your specific needs. If you have any questions about changing the custom settings, 
I suggest that you confer with your IT person if you have one, or contact me directly. When used in an office, desktop scanners can be used as part of an office-wide digital document policy. My best practices for how offices should be scanning documents are as follows. Documents should be scanned immediately when they come in by mail, in person, or by delivery. Before any files are archived or destroyed, a complete scanned copy should be made and saved in an appropriate folder. Once documents are scanned, text recognition software should be run on them so that they're smaller in size and it's possible to copy and paste and search the contents of the document from the operating system. Specific file and folder naming conventions should be used so that everyone will know what file name to give each document and where to put each file in the system. By maintaining these policies, you can have complete confidence in your digital document system. You'll be able to rely on your documents always being complete, you'll always know where your documents are, and you and your staff will be able to work on the documents from your own individual computers. If everything happens and is in place before you sit down to do your work, you'll be saving time and money. This is another small change that can have a big impact. In my experience, desktop scanners are very powerful pieces of equipment. Despite the hype about going paperless, paper continues to be used for many different functions and must be managed and stored. By scanning documents as much as possible, the world of paper is brought into the world of computers, where all of the various benefits I've been discussing are available. I highly recommend that you use a desktop scanner so that you can enjoy the same benefits too. Thank you for watching. I hope that I was able to provide you with some useful information that you can put into use today. If you liked this video and found it to be helpful, please comment below, leave a like, and subscribe or follow. For more information about me and the full version of my course, please visit me at www.waythorn.com.